Welcome back. You're tuned into your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso, only on SABC3. Time for the buzz this morning. Now, recycling is always a very hot topic, and we often think about recycling old food, plastic, and even glass. But what happens to old electrical appliances that have outlived their life cycle? And how do you correctly dispose of them so they don't pose a threat to the environment? Well, here to tell us more about the importance of e-waste management is Suzanne Ditka. She's the director of EnviroSense. Suzanne, good morning. Welcome to Expresso. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Very interesting topic because all of us at home somewhere has yeah. got old <coughs> keyboards, old computers, old wires, cell phones. So, so does that classify as e-waste? Well, by, ne by definition, e-waste is anything that runs on electricity or on a battery yes. and it can still be in use or it can be not in use because sometimes you perceive it as being outdated like yes. your old phone that is what I found in my in my play in my home today and you know it still works perfectly but I have but another I mean, you, latest model it. so exactly. for me that's e-waste. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, and I mean, like we say, it does pose a threat to the environment yeah. if not disposed of correctly. So, so what are some of the things that you can do with your e-waste? Well, first prize would obviously be to recover the function of electronics, and especially um, companies that have uh, that refurbish or, or you know that get a new generation of computers. Those materials are still very useful. So, there are commercial refurbishers who can actually take those type of computers and ICT equipment and can refurbish it. So they get another new lease of life. And those can then be donated right. to communities. We have, for example, in the Cape, a refurbisher, they do just that, just PCs. They take from corporates equipment and some of them they sell and then they go to donations yes. and then the companies use it as part of their social um, corporate responsibility program so everyone is happy so everyone is happy exactly. so that's recovery of function okay exactly. i mean but look at these very cool things i mean here's <laughs> we have a little clock I mean, made right. up of old parts yeah we have a couple of very clever people in this town and also in <laughs> south africa yes well, we're a creative nation see you know some art where other people see waste those things are coming actually out of a hard drive wow. and you can actually see it on the back this is a hard drive this is what you find in a motherboard um, this is where the memory is stored now you're adding a couple of numbers on it that's amazing and a couple of uh, uh, markers and you can sell it as a clock obviously it takes a little bit more than that but that exactly. is really added value but this is a great way to to yeah. use your old e-waste yeah. if you can get creative or making key rings now obviously that will not solve the e-waste problem this is a nice have yes. to Okay, the majority of the e-waste that we have we'll need to dismantle because it's too old. It doesn't have any function that exactly. we can recover. Like those old keyboards. No one wants those. And those are liabilities. And we have, unfortunately, when it comes to e-waste, a couple of very sexy things that people like to recover because there is value in them. Okay, yes. things like printed wire boards. So if you, as a household, take your stuff and throw it on the curbside and think someone will take care of it, you actually add to a massive problem because there what, will a person what come along. To it, yeah. Well, there comes the trolley guy, and he will take those cables, and he knows in those cables is copper. Yes. So what he will do is he will burn that cables, and this is a very toxic. I it's see. a chlorinated plastic. So if you burn that plastic, you're actually mm. creating a massive air pollution problem, highly cancerogenous um, fumes. And then they recover the copper that goes to the scrap metal dealer. Yes. So we must never do this. It's really, really important to put this only to authorized recyclers and authorized exactly. refurbishers. Just go to show how important it is to correctly dispose of yeah. your e-waste. Now, I know South Africa announced a collection date yeah. for all the e-waste around the country. That's on the 6th of April. This is this Saturday. Very exciting. T yes. Talk to me a bit about the event. What can we expect? How's it going to work? Look, it's not the first time that yes. we tried to pull a nationwide collection event together, but this time IWASA, which is the e-waste association, South Africa, in partnership with Institute of Waste Management, and some of the service providers has teamed up to provide a nationwide solution That's and great. that is really cool because in places like Hoteng and the Western Cape we don't struggle that badly there are companies who provide e-waste solutions yes. but you look further up northern province it really is a problem so what we decided and what Iwasa decided was to work with existing service providers including some of the retailers like pick and pay who offer on a daily basis take back solutions for batteries and cartridges macro incredible connections all those places actually offer um, those take back facilities on a permanent base uh, yeah. in all the stores but people are not aware of it that's okay? the biggest problem so what we're yeah. trying to say is we actually work with the existing drop of solutions and existing drop of partners just to cre create awareness that we actually do have right. solutions right. available so that's the importance of a day like yes. saturday for the whole 6th day. of april so go to your garage and you know you'll find things like this one hit wonders <laughs> someone gives little this things. to you as a little toy and 
And yeah. you look at this and think, this is fun, like for one night out, and then it lies you've around. You've used it once and you've never used it this again. This is e-waste. This is designed for the dump. Yes. So we must actually stop buying stuff we don't exactly. need with money we don't have that just becomes yes. waste and doesn't really fulfill any yes. other function than a five-minute job. Perfect. Suzanne, thank you so much. So now is the time to really go up and gather all the e-waste at home ready I for predict the great collection. collection event. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or get creative with it. That's pretty much exactly. it. So we'll put all those details on our website, expressoshow.com. Check it out. So if you have any e-waste, dispose of it correctly. Like Suzanne said, it can damage the environment badly. very, very badly. Go do it. We'll put all the details on our website, expressoshow.com. Up next, though, we caught up with a very inspirational young woman. Her name is Monique Hollis. She is a 17-year-old high school learner, and she has just published her second novel called Give and Take. And we caught up with her ahead of her book launch for a bit of a feel-good story on this Tuesday morning. Check it out.